welcome to the R video tutorial on data description. Here we're going to learn about the apply function. Okay, so I've got this data set called hr2.rvv. You can find it in the repository down below in the description. Please read that in and we need to take a look at it. So once you've got it read in, what you might want to do is realize that this isn't a format that we've seen before. So what I've done is I've just went up to file open inside of our studio and looked at the file directly because it'll read in a text file. And if you notice here, it is a text file. It has interesting numbers in it and interesting information. Uh, but notice that it has uh, these carrots between each of the values. So there's these uh, carrots. So it looks like a carrot separated value file. So. I'm not going to save this file because I accidentally hit the space bar, but I am going to read it in. So I'm going to call this data1, or let's make it even easier, hr2. It's already got a number on it. Uh, so we can do read.table, and we can read this table in, and it is on my desktop right now. Uh, if you've noticed, it's easy for me to put stuff on the desktop, but in reality, I really don't. I dump everything into a Google Drive. But anyway, I put this on the desktop right now, hr2rvv. We notice that it has a header, is true. And we also notice that the separator is a caret. So we can add this caret in here. And uh, I'm going to type in here head hr2 just to see if it worked instantly without having to go over to my environment and look. And sure enough, we have this data that's read in over here. All right, so what we're interested in is we did the summary statistics in the last video. And what we want to do is not have to do this one at a time. So there's this great function, which is called the apply function, which will apply the same function to what ever range or direction you give it. So here I'm going to uh, put here learn about the apply function. And it works a little bit backwards. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to use it easily. So uh, apply and then you would put in what you're interested in. And usually it's a data set. You don't put the actual variable names in. Uh, we're going to do that in a minute. But the second thing you would need to do is put in a one or a two here. So I'm going to do two for columns, and I'll put a little note down in my uh, comments to remind me of this. And then the function I want to use. So mean is the function I wish to use. Okay, so how do I choose one or two? So for the second argument, let's see here, one equals rows, two equals columns. So this is what it's going to add or subtract or mean across or whatever. So if you want it to go across the row and produce a new column, then you would select rows, number one. If you want it to go down the columns and produce a new row, then you would put number two. And that's what we're interested in here. So when I do this, it's going to run across here and it's probably going to give me an error because it's got a variable that is not numeric, right? It doesn't quite know what to do with this over here, which is text. So I'm actually going to need to subset this. So HR2, I can't use all of the data because what I need to do is put in here the rows or columns that I want. So I want columns number one, two, three, four, and five. So I want to have columns one through five. So I'm going to put one colon five. If you go back and look at a video where we talk about sequences and other interesting things. Uh, you can see why I put one through five in there. And then when I run this, notice because there's no text in it, it actually produces the means for me directly. And it gives, still has the headers along with it directly. So I don't need to do anything else. I can just run it apply the function to a whole bunch of the data and it spits me back a row that has all of the interesting information that I want. This is the mean strength uh, dexterity, the mean uh, tenaciousness, the mean age, and the mean heart rate that we had here. So this apply function is really, 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 really useful. 
And the thing is, is you really need to get used to using it because it can make your life so much easier. So if I want to get some other statistics out of this, I could do HR2, and I'm going to do exactly the same columns, which means I probably should have copied and pasted this. You can tell that I'm not really with it today, uh, which is kind of usual. So if I run this line of code, it gives me the standard deviations for each of the columns. So I can look across here and see what the standard deviations of the columns are. I can also apply HR2 and put other functions in here, like IQR, like we learned in the last video. So I'm going to go down the column. I want the IQR for the column. So when I run this line, it produces the IQR for the column. You're not restricted to this either. So HR2, uh, or you're not restricted to a function that just has one output. So I'm going to do one through five, and I'm going to put in the quantile function, because if you've noticed, I seem to like it. Uh, so quantile function, and I don't put in everything, but I do need to tell it what quantile I want, and I can put in more than one. So maybe I want 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 0 0.2. Eight. So why do I want these quantiles? I don't know. I just do. I'm being, uh, it's all about me today. It's what I want. And this is what I'm interested in. So you don't have to do the standard ones. But when I run this line, notice what it does. It actually created a little table here where the first row is the 20th percent quantile. The middle row is the 50th percent quantile, which is also the median. And the last row is the 80th percentile or 80th quantile. And it gives me all of this for all of the columns that I selected, which is really handy. Uh, and that allows me to do lots of things with it. So you can use this apply function to get lots and lots and lots of summaries. And it's kind of tricky to learn how to use. I think it actually think backwards on it. Because uh, notice that I want the mean of HR2 down the column. So you think about the function you want first, but in this the supply function, you actually put the function that you want to use at the end instead of at the beginning. And that's a little bit hard to remember. But once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. Rarely do I ever go across the rows. However, if I'm working with people in the social sciences, often I'll go across rows to create summaries of specific uh, variables that combine together to make a questionnaire from a questionnaire to make a single number out of it. So it, it's kind of useful for that. All right, so here's the apply function. Uh, it reuses some of our data subsetting here. It uses uh, the ability to know these sample uh, statistics functions. So keep that in mind as we move on to the next video.